Welcome back to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast to dive into our second segment of the show, a popular one starting to develop here on the episode, the Brandon IU contract situation going on with the 49ers has been going on throughout the entire offseason. There has been some bad feelings about it, some positive ones coming from John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan, but now I think we're sort of starting to really turn the page, turn the corner, however you want to say it, and start to come to a realization that this might not be as close as people would have thought, at least as close as 49ers fans would have thought, because we have constantly seen the trade rumors, any trade talk up to this point be declined by the 49ers and John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan, but also with the recent extension to Christian McCaffrey, it did add additional funds to the salary cap, about $7 million more uh, in salary cap there created, and also about $18 million also from the uh, post-June 1st release of Eric Armstead. So they had about $25 million in salary cap now to work with. Definitely more encouraging to try and get that extension done with Ayuk, but at the same time now, you have Brandon Ayuk's personal trainer, wide receiver trainer, TJ Houseman Zade, say that Ayuk is feeling more pessimistic about a deal getting done and he said it recently, appearing on the 95.7 The Games uh, radio show with Willard and Dibbs, basically saying that at one point, Brandon Ayuk thought he may sign. That optimistic outlook has turned into a pessimistic outlook, according to Hausman Zade, the wide receiver trainer, saying that a few days ago on that radio show. And that really seems to be the first time that there has been revealed about any sort of negative feelings coming from because before it was very cryptic you know Brandon Ayuk would say something on his social media there would be else something else coming from a relative of his but nothing too concrete up until this point and now I think this is a bit more legitimate of a reason to think that this is not really going to get done at the end of the day because of you have the trainer saying it and before you have people close to him who are related to him you know the trainer doesn't have to come out and say this the trainer um, isn't as close as obviously a family member would who would want to see Brandon Ayuk get a massive deal and get, you know, paid for all that he does. But a trainer, you know, I feel like that's a little bit distant enough to not, you know, have any other incentive other than really telling the truth and how Brandon Ayuk really feels. I'm sure they've talked about it. I'm sure Brandon Ayuk ha- has had this trainer for a while now and could feel some level of um, personal connection to him to reveal some of his actual feelings around this deal and also... The trade rumors have all always been there for Ayuk and how the 49ers sort of deal with this situation. With such a massive asset to their team, but also in the trade market, that also seemed to be a legitimate reason as to why, you know, this deal hasn't gotten done yet. Maybe they could trade him now instead of losing him for basically nothing next year in free agency. And really, these trade rumors really heighten and reach their peak during the NFL draft when there seemed to be some interest from the Broncos, the Steelers mostly, but nothing really um, came about after that. And then you had the 49ers draft Ricky Pearsall out of Florida. And not only did that, you know, boost any other thoughts about them moving on from Brandon Ayuk, there was also those trade rumors around Debo Samuel just coming out of nowhere. But those have seemed to pretty much die out in recent weeks. And now, the recent action of the 49ers really pushed me to believe that this isn't going to get done because I've always said it. I've always felt that if you really value an asset, if you really value extending and keeping a player over the long period of time and wanting him to be on your team, you would get that deal done and prioritize it ahead of other things that you might have in line. You look at the Vikings and Justin Jefferson, not messing around, trying to get this deal done from last off season. They obviously couldn't figure anything out, but they had the time to spend there and say, all right, we're not going to get it done this offseason. Let's wait until next offseason to talk it out even more. We get to this offseason and they finally figure something out. You also look at teams like the Houston Texans getting everything done and out of the way ahead of time, paying probably cheaper than they probably would have if they extended and waited to extend Nico Collins a little bit later. You look at the Philadelphia Eagles, again, extending Devontae Smith right at the beginning of the um, really wave of wide receivers getting their contract extensions. They probably get a bargain for Devontae Smith and also extending A.J. Brown. Say they waited until after Justin Jefferson got his deal, they would not have had that extra time with A.J. Brown as they do now for an additional three to four years. So those are teams that 
sort of got the got their deals done and priorities out of the way because they really truly wanted to get it done. Now you look at the 49ers and it's a little bit different. You do acknowledge the fact that Christian McCaffrey's also there. He wasn't really satisfied with his contract. So, okay, I can kind of understand that. McCaffrey obviously is who he is. A very great running back, probably the best running back in the NFL and also does a lot of things in the passing game. So, you can get a, a pass for him, but now they finally do it, and they waited a long time to get Christian McCaffrey that reworked contract, that contract extension now in June, basically, where they had all that additional time with Brandon Ayuk. Again, if they wanted to get it done, they could have done it months ago, where they could uh, very well have done it then and then probably have paid close to what Jalen Waddle got, $28, $27 million. Well, probably not $27. Um, probably $28 or $29 million. Now they have to wait, and it is rumored that uh, Brandon Ayuk would want something close to Amon Ross St. Brown's deal. Again, um, that's what happens when you wait for these other receivers to get their deals handed to them by their own teams. And uh, Brandon Ayuk's agent continued on to discuss those rumors and the idea that $30 million per year is appropriate for a wide receiver the caliber of Brandon Ayuk by saying... If the 49ers want to get B.A. signed, give him the Amon Ra deal. I guarantee he'd be in there tomorrow. They don't want to do that. If they'd offered him the Amon Ra St. Brown deal, he would be in camp right now. And, of course, Brandon Ayuk is still or wasn't present for the 49ers mandatory minicamp that concluded last week. Um, also interesting around that um, just point there. Nick Bosa wasn't present for the mandatory minicamp last offseason, but they sort of rescinded the fines that are supposed to go down on the players because they missed, obviously, the mandatory part of the offseason. But last year, they rescinded those fines for Nick Bosa, and now this year, reports from the 49ers have indicated that that won't be the case with Brandon Ayuk. Again, pushing you to believe that if they rescinded Nick Bosa's fines, Similar situation, trying to get a massive deal, and they didn't rescind Brandon Ayuk's fines. Again, makes you think they got Nick Bosa's deal done. They saved them the extra cash in paying those fines. They're not going to do the same for Brandon Ayuk, probably leading you to believe that he won't stay with the team much longer if they're not willing to do him a solid there and not actually make him pay the fines for missing this part of the offseason. And now, again, coming from his agent, still a person of confidence, Similar to a relative, but not really that close. Makes me believe that this is a legitimate possibility now for the 49ers. And also, Brandon Ayuk, you want to compare him to Amon Ross St. Brown. I sort of did this back a couple episodes ago when talking about the report that he would want around $30 million. Um, if you look at the stats again, Brandon Ayuk had back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons the last two years out of his four years in the NFL. And... Almon Ross St. Brown has also had two 1,000-yard seasons and one 900-yard season where shorter time in the NFL and more efficient level of production than Brandon Ayuk, obviously, because Brandon Ayuk in his first two years, I want to say, put up close to 600, 700 yards probably in production, about five touchdowns max in each of the seasons where Amon Ross St. Brown has right away stepped into the league Almost produced a 1,000-yard season in his first year, and then it's been a 1,000 and a 1,000 to follow that up. But that is very much in favor of Amon Ross St. Brown, but also you want to look at the opposite side and say that Brandon Ayuk has had to compete with Debo Samuel, George Kittle, and now obviously Christian McCaffrey, who would need his fair share of carries and attention on that offensive side of the ball. And Amon Ross St. Brown really doesn't have to deal with that. He is the main guy there um, in a room. In an offense really filled with Sam Laporta, a rookie in Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery, Jamison Williams, really other players that I don't think it would be too radical or too crazy to say that aren't really at the same level talent-wise as Amon Ross St. Brown. So that is another factor to consider, and um, the 49ers clearly have their doubts about this, about the value of um, extending Brandon Ayuk up to this point. I want to say another rumor um, I saw in my time of researching this was that right now I think the 49ers offer to Brandon Ayuk stands at about 26 to $28 million per year as a salary, and obviously that is not enough for Brandon Ayuk in his estimation. Uh, and I don't know, it is an interesting topic just because 
It all depends on how people view him. I personally would have wanted to see another year of Brandon Ayuk and seeing him produce at that same level because right now, two seasons out of the four, I'm 50-50 on that. You know, half of the time you've been in the NFL, you've produced up until that level. And yeah, Debo, George Kittle might hurt him because he might not be getting the targets as those guys would probably get. But at the same time, on that flip side, is he getting now less attention because more people are paying attention to Debo and George Kittle and Christian McCaffrey that he gets more one-on-one opportunities? There's a lot of factors and a lot of reasons why you would think the 49ers have their doubts about him. Um, my value for Brandon Ayuk, you know, I think someone will give him 30. Would I give him 30 if I was the 49ers? Probably not. Um, just because of the salary cap, they already extended Christian McCaffrey, it seems like Debo Samuel, you know, they're not really going to trade him. And then you have Ricky Pearsall there already. You extended Juwan Jennings. That's another player you prioritized ahead of Brandon Ayuk. The signs aren't there to make me believe this is going to work out. And right now it seems like both parties are just standing, staring at one another, waiting to see who blinks and who budges on something to happen. And he didn't show up to the mandatory mini camp, so now we're going to have a period of where nothing really happens. Brandon Ayuk will continue to train. The 49ers will continue to do their own thing until training camp starts. And then I don't expect Brandon Ayuk to be there either. Um, The 49ers are probably going to have to answer a lot of questions once training camp starts. And that's really um, where we're going to see more of this develop. If he doesn't show up and the 49ers have to answer more and more questions about it, they're going to come to a point to realize that, you know, this isn't working. Waiting a little bit longer could open up some more opportunities, maybe another domino fall somewhere where a team now feels more inclined to trade for uh, Brandon Ayuk, so that could be a positive, but for right now, it just seems like I said both te- both parties are waiting for the other one to react. No one's budging up until this point, and it just seems like they're drifting further and further away from each other. It is a shame, but at the same time, you know, the 49ers are loaded anyway. I'm really a big fan of Ricky Pearsall, so... I expect him to contribute right away. They have still Christian McCaffrey, Debo, and George Kittle to have definitely enough to win that division. And maybe you can make an argument to uh, be challenged a little bit more in the playoffs in the NFC. But, you know, the 49ers are still in a great place. And big picture, if you can get something back for Brandon Ayuk in a trade, that probably seems to be the most realistic and best option for the 49ers at this point, if really they can't get anything done. You just have to swallow your pride and do it. You might not want to, but at the end of the day, somebody else out there will want to pay Brandon Ayuk that price. That is just the reality of the market, whether you think he's valued at that or not. Um, The prices just keep going up, so that's where I stand on it. That's where I think the 49ers will eventually do with this deal. But for right now, we're going to put a pin on that, and we're going to go to our second break of the show, and when we return, more on this issue around the NFL officials, how the decline of performance in recent seasons has been something to take note of, and why that could be. I will provide those answers after the break in the next segment, so don't go anywhere. You're listening to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. 